All right. Well, let's get into it. It is uh, Thursday night. The Sharks take on the Parramatta Eels um, at what is it? What is that stadium called now? Is it Combank or Bank West? Was Bank West near Combank? Yeah, I thought Bank West was a good good name for that. Yeah, the, the Sharks travel to Parramatta Stadium. Oh, that's right. I've even got that in my notes, whatever it's called now. Uh, for a match that simply cannot come soon enough, the Eels are coachless after they sacked Brad Arthur last week and was last start losers. No new coach bounce for them. Uh, Clint Gutherson has been vocal in the media with him, his impending return, and also that of Mitchell Moses, claiming that they are going to be right up for this one and that they are not giving up on their finals hopes right now. I have actually not decided who I'm going to tip yet because I'm on the fence. So I'm going to use my host privilege to listen to the uh, <laughs> the, the rundowns from my dear friends on this panel and anyone in the in the um, in the comments. If you would like to make me lean one way or the other on what you think I should tip, some people like it when I don't tip the sharks, uh, then we can certainly do that. Um, but yeah, I'm just not sure which way I'm going to go. So, Maddie, why don't you give us the historical overview of Sharks versus the Eels. With pleasure. So we played 91 times. Uh, the last few years, we played them bizarrely early in the season, so in March, and then not played them again for the rest of the year. So obviously early last year, round two, we won. Will Kennedy scoring a hat-trick in that one the year before. We had the re- return to Shark Park match at uh, round two, 2022, which was rightly one of the top five matches at Shark Park of all time, in my view. Uh, and we won that one with a Nico Hines conversion on the side, uh, on the siren from near the left touch line. And prior to that, we played at uh, Parramatta Stadium in early 2021, or the was it Bank West at the time. And we had a lot of injuries. I think we ran out of interchanges on the bench and we got uh, overrun in the second half, 28 to 4. So looking overall, we've won 49. Parramatta's won 42. So that's a pretty good record against a. Parramatta's not a foundation club, but it's a team we've been playing against since 1967. Uh, so the most we've won in a row is six. The overall points tally is actually interesting enough. We've scored 1,507 points. They've scored 1,717 points. So they've racked up some big scores in that time against us, 74-4 uh, and the like. Um, I took my hands. The, yeah. I my hands. There. Shane Hayne. I saw Shane Hayne on Saturday night, actually. He uh, walked oh, past uh, just as David Peachy was being introduced, actually, but uh, <laughs> didn't get a chance to to chat. Yeah, to yell out. Can we, can can we go I'm shake hands there? Yeah. Well, I, well, I yeah. don't know what Peachy yeah, would say to him. He'd probably just yeah. talk with his hands. Do you <laughs> remember Shane. that reference, Francis? Do you know what we're talking about there? No. no. So <laughs> when Peachy was sent off in that 74 4 match, um, Shane Hayne said to him, you're speaking aggressively to me. You can't wave your hands at me or something like that. And Peachy <laughs> said, I talk with my hands, Shane. I'm like, a, <laughs> so it's just- I talk with my hands, Shane. You've got to clean up the ruck. Um, and <laughs> then and and I then think that's all that off. was said. He was uh, sin binned. And then as he walked off, Peachy said, that's F and SH1T. Uh, yeah. he, Hayne thought that he said effing cheat. Uh, and then he pointed and said he's sent off. And Peachy was already half out half the tunnel then. I think Peachy had to be told that you are sent off and not to return. Uh, Peachy was then sent to the, straight to the judiciary afterwards. They poured over the recordings and eventually agreed that Peachy was right with his defence that he said SH1T, not cheat. Uh, yep. And Peachy was returned to play South the following week with no suspension and no case to answer. So, anyway... Different times. We also had two so. sin bins in that game. So at one stage, we were down three players. So hence the yep. scoreline. Right. Yeah. Actually, also, we had another send off. Uh, who was that? Was it Dale Newton, I think. And it was Danny Nutley was, was also sent to the sin bin. So oh, yeah. anyway, we'll cover that in. Uh, in we in will depth. do that one as a classic Corolla Chronicle at later, some just because it's just. Point. And it's just just so we've mentioned multiple times there, yeah, the halves pairing that night for Parramatta was Adam Dykes and John Morris. And anyway, so looking at games, Parramatta what games. At, what about recent form? So recent well, Parramatta home games, they've been 50. <laughs> uh, we've won 23. They've won 27. Recent form, we've had a pretty good record against them looking at it. So we've won the last two in a row. So it probably means we're due for a loss, unfortunately. But uh, we uh, we lost them last in uh, 28-4, as, as I mentioned, in 2021. We beat them in 2019, 42-22. That was a, a Wade Graham returning from that ACL that he did in the mm. pre, uh, so the semifinal or first week quarterfinal match against the Roosters in 2018. He returned and had a blinder, went straight into the origin side over in Perth and 
had about seven try assists and everyone was talking about how he had more try assists than Nathan Cleary in about 10 minutes after coming off the bench. Uh, but we also lost at Cogra in horror conditions, 14-12. I think that was another match where we scored three tries, couldn't kick a goal. They scored two yeah, tries. Matt Moore lost at fullback. scored and, three and they kicked. Yeah. And, they scored and Parramatta, two. Were, Parramatta were top of the table there. We were we were, were not great during that era. Uh, but we had some good wins in there. Parramatta beat us 24-12 early 2019. But we had a good record against them uh, during that period. And so we were 22-20 in 2018, uh, 14-4 and 20-6 in back-to-back matches also, uh, both in March of 2017 and 18, respectively, at ANZ Stadium when they were rebuilding Parramatta Stadium. And then uh, prior to that, we had the famous comeback from 18 nil down to win 34-24 uh, in 2016 at home where we uh, – that was the, the the game that set us top of the table for the first time in a long time. Uh, everyone was was well and truly well, believing right. by that stage, especially coming back from 18 nil. So down. Have we got the form coming in against them or not, Williams? What's the, the yes form, now? Well, I'd, I'd, well, I'd say well, yes, we do have the form against them. We, we beat them last year. I think Parramatta were – uh, started well early against us last year. You and I were at that match. They were up 10 nil early. We worked our way back into it. Uh, Will Kennedy got a hat trick, including, I think, my favourite uh, try of that one was uh, the Ronaldo intercept, quick play the ball, give it to Siffer, uh, who then gave it to Kennedy, who stepped. I think it might have been Gutherson. Also in that match, Gutherson feigned a, a head knock. Uh, he actually, the replay showed that it didn't touch his head at all, stayed down, got sent for a head injury assessment whilst he was in the, I suppose, off the field getting assessed, uh, regretting his decision, uh, we ran in three quick tries. So, yeah. That's um, right, we did too. Yeah. yeah. So and Ryan has appropriately sh- called out that this is the Johnny Manor Cup, and we do. It is. You're right. Big fans yeah. of Johnny Manor. Um, Johnny Manor, yeah. So we, um, yeah, we did that. We did one of the classic Chronicles where Johnny Manor played in that match. I can't remember which one that was. Matty, that but was yeah, the- he was on fire in that one. Yeah, 2011. Uh, he's been in a few of them, actually. The 2009 game yeah. against Canberra, the 2011 game against the Dragons. So he's, he's been in a few there. All right, well, we're starting to get some tips through. So uh, Scott Latino is picking that the Sharks will win in a Golden Point thriller with Atkinson nailing the field goal. Uh, surprisingly, Harley mm-hmm. is picking that the Sharks will bounce back with Braden Trindle coming into the team. Um, I don't think Harley will ever tip against the Sharks. So Harley, you legend. And then SJD, well, he's just saying it's 42 nil. Time travel special. All right, let's go look at the teams that were named uh, as I press that view and then I go and do that. There you go. And then Chris Kelly. Now, we've worked out that we often get the sound wrong with when we name these teams and we play the songs. So, Chris, what you have to do is you have to let it play for a couple of seconds. And then start talking so that then it sinks, according to our dear friend Franco. So are you ready Let's to go. name the Sharks team for the benefit of our Spotify viewers? Let's go. Are we going to play the music? All right. So in our lineup this week is Will Kennedy, Sione Katoa, Jesse Ramey, Helio, and Ronaldo Mulatalo. Atkinson with Brayton Trindle returning in the seven jersey. Hazelton, Braley, Kafusi, Nakora, Wilton, and Jack Williams playing in the 13 jersey. T. Wilton's our captain. We've got the boss, Talakai, Big Toby's back, as we spoke about, Royce and, and Brandon Hammond, who Ellie returns from injury also. Pretty good balanced team. Good to see him back. And then this week, we go into a bit of an Eels team that's a bit of a mix up. So Gutherson does return. Very Shark S playing a team with Gutherson returning. Sebo, Penasini, Russell, Simmonson, Brown, and Mitchell Moses returns at the halfback. RCG at the prop, Brendan Hands, Junior Polo, Tiwilagi, Cartwright, Oppo and Gowie, and Blaise Tiwilagi comes off the bench this week with Sean Lane off the bench. Also, Makatoa and Greg and coach Trent Barrett, or interim coach Trent Barrett. Interim coach Trent Barrett, indeed. What do we make of that Eels team, Francis? Uh, I think there'll be a lot of pressure on Gutho and Moses. Um, that, that, you know, there's been the talk, oh, they'll be the saviour of the Eels. And, um, you know, I think we'll we'll put a lot of pressure on them. Uh, there's no hop good, so that'll be interesting. I've got a lot of time for him and he's a brilliant player. And um, so I think they've got it all in front of them and we, we, we've got to uh, lift to our normal level and, and above as one of the... Uh, the comments were, you know, we do do to them what Penrith did to us after our loss. Well, I believe for them, Trent Barrett can find time to stop celebrating that time where he beat the 
the Sharks when he was coaching the Bulldogs and he was so excited <laughs> to get his first win as a coach. Um, yeah. Bryce Cartwright st- scares me a little bit. I was just, you know, he's an enigmatic kind of hot and cold player who can create a bit. Uh, Chris is shaking his head. You know, Bryce Cartwright's any good? No, like I said, very dynamic. He gets, throws the ball, loves a little offload, a lot of mistakes coming out. It's quite interesting they dropped uh, Joey Lussick from nine. Brendan Hands comes back in. Uh, like Francis said, no hot good, but Moses does return. He has had a, a 12-week layoff, though, so it is a bit of rust that yeah, he's coming back from. Pressure. Gutherson's also returning from a surgery as well. I think he was four weeks. Uh, Sivo had a shocker, but also he's caught a couple of tries. Uh, the one the kid tail uggy on the bench is an interesting one because uh, our old coach Shane Flanagan was chasing him from the Dragons, but I, th- I think I heard a rumor through a few beers on Saturday that he had re-signed back with Parramatta because there was a bit of talk, a bit of money flying around for him, and he's played one six seven three. So to see him and he scored a couple of tries back to back weeks, to see him at fourteen, a bit interesting. He's going to play a utility role, and Sean Lane, who's not had a great season at all, is coming off the bench, so. Uh, seeing Barrett make a few changes that he wants to see, but oh, yeah, I'm not too sure. It's very shark s like we've always said. Me and Williams have always discussed. We always play a team where they're coming off a shellacking, a coach change, you know, four players coming back. That was the proof of the pudding against Penrith. You know, they'd come off a embarrassing loss against the Warriors, which they had their game in hand, and they come out and did what they did. So yeah, the team doesn't really scare me out of a tipping of sharks, but. Oh, it's, it reeks of shark esque. I reckon that's that's the thing. It reeks of shark esque. Uh, you're right there, Francis Hopgood. Uh, being out is a, a big plus for us. Uh, he caused a lot of trouble yeah. last year. Uh, a few line breaks and a lot of offloads. Really, really dynamic second rower. Uh, Mitch Moses caused us a lot of issues the last two times we played them as well. Scored two tries last year, and then the year before that also scored a great try in halftime with a chip and chase, where I think we were up eight nil. Uh, and then or oh, 8-2, sorry. Uh, they got uh, took the two, brought it back to 8-2, and then got a try right on halftime and bring it back to 8-all. So uh, Moses will be looking to impress. Um, I think uh, that's, I'm smelling an upset here, unfortunately. I think it's got all the hallmarks of that. There's a lot of pressure on Barrett, a lot of pressure on the Eels. you got Gutherson and Moses. It's not an back. upset. They're favourites on the bookmakers. Really? Who? Yeah. No, we are. No, uh, we're we are. So, well, last I, I, I saw that last, on the yeah. well, oh, last, okay. last I checked. Man, I'm sure you can confirm that for us. Thanks <laughs> last for last I'll, I'll, I'll double check. <laughs> last I checked, we're yeah. favourite. I mean, RCG and Junior Paulo have not been playing well lately, but they have the capacity to. Um, so we'll we'll see if we play to our potential. Of course, we'll win and win well. Uh, but I think if they have another performance like the other day, and also after we lost the Tigers, we we were slow to start against the Raiders too the following week, and then we clicked into gear. Uh, but I think being a away game, it's a it's an imposing stadium. Once that Parramatta f- crowd gets behind them, they they lift a lot. I went to the uh, the round one match between the Bulldogs and the Eels there because my son was playing at uh, halftime, and it was impressive. That was a sellout. It was uh, quite a a feisty affair early, a couple of sin bins, and the way that crowd lifted and the team lifted. They're not a great Eels team, but they can do, they can trouble some teams, I think. And they've, uh, well, I mean, even last year, they they went down to Melbourne and, tra- Melbourne and troubled them. So they're able to rise, they're capable of rising to occasions. You're right, Boulder. They have uh, switched the bookmakers, have switched around on the naming of Moses and Gutherson this afternoon. So they're gone. Actually, they've actually come into a dollar sixty seven. So they've even been smashed even more. We've gone out to 220 where it was the other way at the start of the week. So I don't think anyone's expecting still Moses or even Gutherson. I think Gutherson was supposed to be another week or two away. So um yeah, it smells very, very shark ass. Shark's record without Nico. Yeah, Shark's record without Nico is typically not good. That last one might be an anomaly. I've got a few more tips come through. Ryan is tipping the Sharks by 18. And then Ryan is saying that it's typical for Moses and Gutho to return against us. Couldn't write a better headline. Jake is predicting a Morgan Harper hiding from Talakai. Um, no, is he hiding? <laughs> Which he is. He's not being selected. Um, and then, oh, yeah, hide. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, of course. And then um, SJD is saying, oh, I can't read that one out. Um, <laughs> well, Brendan Hands, play doing? on the last name. We'll yes. let you guys uh, read between the lines there. But uh, you mentioned as being no good without Nico. We have had some big wins. So 2022, we were without Nico and beat Melbourne at home. They were without 
uh, Munster, but we were without Nico. We also won the corresponding match last year with uh, a halves pairing of Moylan and Trindle, uh, and also to yeah, recent recent events as well. So we'll see how we go. We'll see how we go. All right, well, we'll just kick you out for five seconds, Williams, as we show this week's uh, favourite opposition fan, and it's the dear wife of Chris Kelly, uh, massive former Eels fan, but now Sharks fan and turncoat as one of those just favourites of ours out there. <laughs> I used to support this team, but now I support this team. And Anik, it's good to see you fully embracing your Cronulla Sharks fandom there with that jersey with you and your lovely, beautiful husband there. And the beauty thing is about this is that you can't comment and reply and say anything to me right now. Good to see you as a <laughs> Look, that was fan. that wasn't the grand final, so, we, you know, we'll allow it. But there was no, a, Actually, I've there seen was, it plenty of times in Shark stuff. That's if, rubbish. If you recall, there was a, there was a bet on the uh, night that we got married because Sharks did play at Eels and whoever won, you had to turn go to the other team. And luckily, the now interim coach, Trent Barrett, slotted a field goal in some wet conditions and we won. So, uh, deal made. Yeah, fair enough. Um, Ryan's calling out the tricky is going to return. So, let's go back and look at this Sharks lineup um, with the return of Tricky Trindle into the halfback position. I guess with Nico being picked for State of Origin, that kind of gives Fitzgibbon a chance to have a look at. Trindle and his headspace and how he's going to perform after a few weeks off and have the two of them on at the same time. Um, do we think Trindle and Atkins are going to be able to work together given that they're competing for that same spot or is it a similar Moylan Trindle situation? I'm going to say, hey, Francis, do you want to answer that one? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think they'll, um, I think they'll, I think they'll work well together. Yeah, I think they'll, Try and work well together. I think they'll be professional and ignore the situation about playing for the same position. Have um, they played together before in terms of in lower grades? They must have when. Mm, no, I don't know. No. Good question. But, not no. sure. Not sure. All right, fair enough. I'll say um, yes. I'll go with Now, that. the other interesting thing, of course, is that Teague Wilton becomes the XX number captain for the Cronulla Sharks. And I know Williams is going to ask me what number. 59th. Oh, I was going to give you the answer. <laughs> <laughs> you asked me to prep it anyway. So, yeah, 59th captain. <laughs> Interesting choice. Uh, there was talk. It was Woody Blake Braley. Uh, I'm not sure. I think, uh, was it even Ronaldo? There was talk of Ronaldo having captained the team. Uh, uh, in our my records, no, Ronaldo has not. But he may have mid-match, maybe. Um, I think maybe it's – or actually, someone said today Teague was next schoolboy captain, uh, Australian schoolboy side. So, uh, he's got leadership qualities there. You can see the the esteem that they hold him in, but also too maybe it's uh, managing Braley's workload as well. He's a, he's a busy guy at hooker. Uh, he's got a lot on his shoulders. He's a young guy, uh, so maybe yeah, just because they're they're good does not might not might not mean that they're the the, the leadership potential they need. Interestingly, in those huddles we've been talking about over the uh, the previous weeks, has been uh, Ronaldo and. Uh, CSC Vitalik guy that have been doing a lot of the talking as well. So, uh, Jake Matuzic has just confirmed for us that, uh, yeah, Teague Wilton is his former schoolboy Australian captain, so he has the pedigree to go and do it. But when you look at it, it's a bit of a worry when you can't find a captain that's immediately presentable. I remember when we had the Paul Gallon and Greg Bird, and it, Bird just it, marched in when Gallon was out and said, no, nah, I want to be the captain, and we still had Kamali floating around as well. I think it's a reflection of the experience of the side, and I suppose the weekend also is an experience, a reflection of the, the experience level of the side. It's still a young team. It's a good thing, right, Penrith? Uh, actually, one thing I was going to say earlier, that, that the loss on the weekend reminded me of when we beat Penrith in early 2017. It was on the Easter weekend. We went there. Everyone was talking about how great Nathan Cleary was, how great the Panthers were. They're on their, their five-year plan, and we were all laughing at the time going five-year plan and obviously the jokes on us now they've won three premierships in a row probably should have been four uh, and we beat them 28 to 2 and they were camped on our line and we just continued to repel them and then we just went downfield and scored and scored and scored again and I remember the Panthers fans were leaving there even Gus was almost sounding kind of destroyed in commentary and he was still involved in the club going gosh we've thrown everything into this this is our big match this is the opportunity to to play the reigning premiers and, and prove our worth and we just got roundly and soundly pumped and that's a bit how we felt on the weekend but the, the tide may well turn. It'll take time. Uh, whether it, it may be us, hopefully it is us, but it'll be another team that eventually uh, knocks them off. And, uh, yeah, I think that it, it's a young side, uh, but it's good. They've picked Teague. See how he goes. Hopefully we don't have to use him too much because it means we're without McInnes and Hines. Uh, but, yeah, hopefully we, we move on from there. Well, I'll just, I'll just remind that, you know, Franco's not here, but there was a reason we named two co-captains. 
I know he's retired at the moment, but if McGuinness was looking to play Origin, we would have had Fanukin captaining the team and it wouldn't have been an yeah. issue. But, you know, that's why you kind of name co-captains and uh, have a sort of captaincy squad for these situations. At least, so. at least we haven't gone a five-man leadership group like uh, Newcastle. Correct. In the yeah. so. or I just named the entire well. team as, as captains. Lats has well, come through for us and confirmed that Brandon, <laughs> I think he means Braden there. Um, he's corrected himself he later. Braden and Daniel have played together in the halves of Newtown and quite successful. I thought that was the case that they played together. I'm also looking forward to the bench. I've been saying this for weeks, and they were the bench was top of the Boldo tiers in terms of top Sharks players. Rudolph and Hamlin, Ueli and Talakai are like absolutely brilliant forwards to have coming off the bench. And Royce Hunt was our best player last week. And so yeah. I felt against the Panthers, one of the problems we had was also that when our bench came on, the game was just too far gone by the time that those guys got on. So if we can still stay in games, I just feel like the bench makes such an impact for us. Well, you look at Tapur was completely nullified, unfortunately, because he went on for, I think it was his first stint, and we didn't touch the ball. By the time he touched yeah. the ball, he was about to come off, and he was absolutely gassed and dropped it. So, yeah, yeah, you need 50% possession. All right, so we've gotten a tip of the Eels from you, Williams. Is that correct? Yeah, Eels, I reckon. Unfortunately, I think it's going to be Eels by four, but don't hit the panic button. It's just going to be – it's bit, it's it's mid-season. We, we move on from there. Francis, see you, Tevin. Um, sharks all the way. Fair enough. Yep. Chris? Oh. Yeah, as much as I hate Shorigen, um, we're going Cronulla. You know we love playing at Parramatta. All right. Well, that's just put in the tip of the Sharks as well. I have decided after listening to all that that I'm going to go with you, Williams, and I am worried that we will just set it up for Trent Barrett and the story of those returning players and, and maybe give Trent Barrett a shot, and I think they will get the – New coach bounce that so frequently comes up for teams. But I, I see your point, Ryan. Ryan's come through that no way fits. He lets them two in a row after last week. Um, so Ryan is also tipping the Sharks, and Harley is also tipping the Sharks. So the good news is when the Sharks win is that I will cop an appropriate amount of shtick and will no longer be the leader of the ET stand tipping comp competition, <laughs> um, which uh, will be a good thing. Um, because I can't be right all the time. 